So with every abacus bathroom, we get the abacus plan, which gives us the whole layout. Now, it's a great idea to refer to this often, so I will stick it up on the wall, and then I'm gonna mark out the positions of the stud wall on the base plate, just to check that everything's okay. But this is the plan, this is the theory. When we look at the reality, we see a few little things. This is a very old house and there are always surprises. And that's where the experience of a plumber really comes into its own. So there's good news and bad news. The good news is that the joists are all running the right way. So that soil pipe can actually stay in the floor and I can just cut into that. The bad news is I've got pipes down here I've got pipes over there. There's so much pipe work. Some of it I can see is deep down in the floorboards here. So I'm gonna to have to spend a little bit of time working out where all these runs go. Directly below here is a grand piano. And grand piano is a water. That's not a great combination. So I've gotta be really careful. Cutting these pipes when they've got residual water in them is always a little bit of a problem, so I'll have to stick bowls underneath and so on. Anyway, that's my problem. Let me just show you something else. You can see over here that I've got pipes coming up and somebody's very helpfully put a pencil mark on there and a pencil mark on there showing the direction of the flow. So you think, okay, so that's the pipe work going into the pump. So here's the existing pump. So I should be able to trace around and work out what I've got to do to cut that off. So there's the flow going into the pump. But actually, when I look down on the side of the pump, you can see the direction of flow is that way. So somebody's made a mistake. When that was marked up, they marked that up the wrong way around. So it just shows that you can't actually take anybody else's word for it. You've got to verify everything for yourself, and work out what's what. So. That's what I'm gonna do, and it's probably gonna take me the best part of two hours to just trace these pipes back, find out where everything turns off, and then start cutting it out. Because until I cut it out, I can't get my shower tray former into this space here. But you'll see what I mean anyway. But that's life as a plumber. And this is the sort of thing you come across all the time in plumbing. This person was that close to having a bad day. Look at that, they, they couldn't have intended to do that. But it just goes to show, when you're screwing down boards, and I think that everybody who's ever screwed down floorboards at some point or another has hit a pipe or a cable. So when you're screwing down, hopefully, the convention is that the plumber stays in the middle of the, the floorboard, right? So their cutout is down here somewhere. But as you can see, they have three pipes going through here. So they've nudged towards the edge here. Just make sure that your screws stay close to the edge of the board so that you're out the way of the, the pipes. Sometimes very, very hard to do, but you're worried about splitting the boards at the edge if you go too close with the screws. So what I'd say in that case is just do a little pilot hole with a drill. But try and stay out of trouble because it can do a lot of damage. Now the other thing is, I'll just show you here, I'm just taking all this pipe work out. And as I've already mentioned, that you know, you've got to keep thinking, thinking, looking, working out what's what, because it's very easy to start ripping stuff out, forgetting where things are. So you see this 15 millimeter T coming out of here, this branch, that's going off to there somewhere. And I don't know where it goes because there's nothing up that way that I can think of. So I'm gonna to have to trace that out because the worst thing is you cut something off and then a couple of weeks later they say, oh, that, that basin in the spare bedroom isn't working. So we'll find out where this is going. If I just get that saw down there. Right, that's that pipe you can see moving there. So we're on the right thing. So if we go along to here, that's it. So it seems to me as if it's going out of the room. So that is the hot. Now, I've cut that pipe off, so hopefully, yeah, we think it's the hot, okay? I think it's the hot, but I always prove things. I don't wanna to jump to conclusions on these things, but I think that's supplying that hot pipe. So what I wanna do is I just get somebody to bang on the other side. I'm gonna to have to ask the cameraman to do it. Can you just take this saw, bang on that pipe again, and what I'm gonna do is just listen 
on here. Do you know Morse code? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Yeah, I reckon that's pretty conclusive. And that message, if I deciphered it correct, is tea's ready. Is that right? No, it was, are you up for lunch? Oh, lunch already. <laughs> so there's still a little bit of water dripping out of there. And I said there's grand piano underneath here. So let's just give it another little suck out with the old trusty wet and dry. Do you know what? Before these were invented, you used to have to just physically suck at the end of pipes and get all kinds of nasty stuff out. With one of these, you can do wonders. Really is good. great things about using this chamfer tool is that you can square off the end of the pipe because I had to cut this in situ and I did it with a recip saw you want to hide into nothing trying to get a square cut and the problem is if you don't get a square cut then when you put this fitting onto there when I do it I can feel a tiny little gap at the bottom which is the worst place to have it really and that tiny gap at the bottom where it's not sitting hard against the shoulder inside is where all the bits of loo paper are going to catch and if they catch then everything else catches behind them and before you know where you are maybe 12 months down the line they've got themselves a block loo or maybe it's just not flushing away as fast as it did so i need to just work on it and make sure that we've got an absolutely smooth transition between that fitting and that pipe and you know what, a lot of plumbers, I know this because, you know, time's money and everything else, you just get it near enough, bang it on, and it's jobs for the drain clearers then, isn't it? Another thing that people worry about is whether they've got enough fall on the pipe, whether there's enough slope going down. And the sort of prescribed fall, if you like, the, the by the book answer is one in 40. So you've got 40 inches, you need a drop of one inch. Now, this is an eight inch joist. So in theory, if you're running through the joists and you've got a four inch pipe, you've got four inches available to you for fall. So that's, that's fine. In this particular situation, in this particular situation here, we're gonna be absolutely fine. Sometimes it's a little bit marginal. And you can also have too much fall. This is what they call, one in 40 is what you call a self cleansing fall. Now, not to put too fine a point on it, what that means is that the solids that are coming from the loo are carried by the water. And if you put too much fall on it, the water goes faster than the solids and leaves them high and dry. So you can do too much. Vertical, you're fine. In this fitting here, there's just a little ridge, a little bump where it's come out of the extrusion mold or whatever and just not quite set there you know it's it's probably a tiny thing in fact if i put it at the top it'll be it'll be absolutely fine so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to mark that up i'll just put a line on there and mark that up as the top of the pipe and if i put it that way around we're fine so what we've got here really is an expansion coupling. It's a push fit coupling on one end and on the other end, it's a solvent weld coupling. So you've got one end which will move slightly so we can put it on and we can pull it back very, very slightly from the shoulder just so that when the pipe expands and contracts, if hot water goes through it, then it, you won't get it sort of creaking and groaning. It, it just has that room to expand there. So. It's an important thing to remember when you're dealing with plastic pipe that it does need to expand if it warms up. <laughs> 